Hi, everyone. I am so happy to introduce you to this beautiful sister in Christ named Melanie. Some of you have read her story already on our friend Michelle Leslie's website about coming out of elevation. And interestingly, she knew Joe, who gave his testimony about elevation on this YouTube channel uh, recently. So Melanie, you're going to meet her. She was at Elevation for six years. She was uh, on staff as the lead photographer in charge of taking photos of the audience, showing them to Stephen Furtick before he would go on stage. And uh, she was very involved. And she's going to talk to us about, you know, we're not here to attack anybody. That's not fruitful at all. We're here to uh, pray for those who are deceived, including um, we believe Stephen Furtick is deceived and we're not attacking him as a person. We're, we're about the theology. And if there's false teachings, it must be exposed according to what the Bible tells us to do. So Melanie, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you so much for having me. Such a huge honor to be here, Aww. truly. Well, bless your heart. Um, it's really great that you reached out to me on Instagram and that's how we met mm -hmm. um, because I read your story a long time ago and I and I just thought I really want to meet her so I'm glad that we get to hang out now as sisters in Christ and and uh, it's it really looks like you are um, focused on solid teachers I, I saw that you mentioned Costi Hinn who's mm -hmm. one of my favorite teachers and he of course like us came out of deception with his uncle Benny Hinn of all people so yeah so. Sometimes those of us who come out of the darkest deception, uh, we appreciate the truth probably more than those who were raised in the truth the whole time. Don't you think? Absolutely. I think for me personally, like, I grew up with the whole charismatic teachers and stuff and word of faith teachers. So like, I really appreciate solid truth and just always focusing on it. Oh, man. It was just more about him being like, me-centered. Okay. Um, I, at the time, I really just want the truth of the gospel. I didn't want any fluff or anything added into it. I just want straight from the Bible, and that's it. Okay. Um, and I wasn't receiving that at all from Elevation. Did he read but, from the Bible uh, at the pulpit? Did he read scripture? He would read scripture, but he would skip over some verses to make it his own, for sure. Okay. So he would read some scripture, skip some, and then make mm -hmm. it about himself. Absolutely. Did you um, point this out to any of your friends at Elevation as you were noticing this? Um, not at the time. I was still figuring it out for myself, and I didn't want to like add confusion to others when I'm still like I was still confused about it. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just was just praying about it. I was just like, well, let me just research about it and learn more about it. Okay. And then, um, what happened when you decided to leave Elevation? So I had a meeting with my supervisor. Um, told him that why I was leaving and um, it did not go well. <laughs> what happened? He got very, um, he got very like offensive, uh, angry. And then we kind of just like left it at there. And before I even like left, the, like left out the door, like I got removed from like everything, like in two seconds. You were scrubbed. Yeah. So, so I'm so sorry that he, that this happened as you, did you tell him it was about theology or did you explain why you were leaving? Um, it was more to it than just theology. It was at the campus I was working at, a lot of people there were just super judgmental. Um, when I was starting to ask questions, they just started to like treat me like an outsider. Um, you're, Cause you're not allowed to like ask any questions. Uh, elevation. You kind of just like your team, Stephen Frederick or team elevation. And that's it. Like you can't, have your opinion about what he says or anything. So I started to have opinions and started to ask questions and dive deeper into like his theology. And um, I was just treated like an outcast and I just didn't want to be part of it anymore. That's exactly what Joe said. Mm -hmm. So there's this pressure to conform and to be quiet and not question the leader. Yes, absolutely. You know, this, I just have to use this word. I know that it's, uh, I use this word very cautiously. It sounds cultish. When there's, a, when there's a leader who's, it's my way or the highway, that's a sign of a cult. Yeah, it definitely was. It felt like a cult towards the end of it, just because like you couldn't do anything really. Hmm. Okay, so then uh, you had joined and been a part of this church because of the fellowship, and you'd made a lot mm -hmm. of friends at the church. You were there for six years. You're mm -hmm. on staff. Uh, and what happened to your friendships after you left? 
after I published that article and I shared it on my own personal social media, um, they questioned it. They got mad. They got defensive. They were like, how dare you speak against like my pastor? Um, and I was like, this is the truth. It's my story. You know, I, I have to speak out against it. Mm -hmm. So were they attacking you personally or just upset in general or how did that? They were just saying out? like I was confused. I was leading people astray that I was oh. damaging people. I was hurting people. Um, so yeah. And oh. a bunch of my friends like just stopped talking to me. So you lost your friends. I have uh, just one friend from Elevation now. <laughs> Back at your time in Elevation, what do you remember about it that you would like to tell others who follow Stephen Furtick? Um, I mean, there was definitely was some good. Um, you know, I think for me, community was really important at the time. Um, people my age, people like just pushing each other closer to God was super huge. Um, so I don't really regret that because I loved my community a lot. Um, the negative was just like... <laughs> So many things wrong with it. Um, Stephen Furtick, he's not a great preacher. We all know that, you know. Um, my basically my biggest thing from him was I. He was always like very me centered. Um, he always focused on how like how do I look on stage? How does the camera look when I'm on stage? Like how can we make it look bigger and wider and people like will want to come to. And that's just, I could not be on board for that at all. As a photographer, were you um, told to take photos at certain angles to make it look differently than it was? Yeah, I actually bought a specific kind of a lens to make it look wider. Um, and there's certain angles and spots like where you're told to like to take photos of him um, and the crowds and stuff. And there's like a special angle like you have to be in to get like a good shot of like his side profile. Because otherwise he wouldn't want to post it. Wow, I, I knew yeah. a I knew a teacher like that that I used to tour with in the New Age, and he always <laughs> wanted his left side photoed. And yeah, and the rest of us were like, well, what, what What does it mean? What's the difference? But um, so, did you have any personal interactions with Stephen? A few times um, when I was a photographer for the live album recording Here's in Heaven, uh, we went to the Time Warner Cable Arena. And we were in the green room and like, we all like prayed together and just like talked a little bit. Um, he was, you know, he was nice. Like he didn't really say much to the photographers, but like, he was just like joking around and stuff like that. Like nothing really major, like he would say to us. So you didn't get any kind of sense of a diva. Um, um I mean like he had like a special like thing that he had like fall, like his staff had to follow for him. Um, special drinks like he would drink only mm -hmm. like a special water uh a lot of stuff that like was just kind of like diva-ish uh -huh. like we kind of just like we didn't think much of it because like obviously he was like, he was our pastor we had to respect him yeah and i mean people have their drink preferences so it's you know Absolutely. You, it, it adds up but you just you note it and i was the same way when i was on stage mm -hmm. i i love grapefruit juice so i would my my divaness was that they would have to supply me with a whole picture picture of freshly squeezed organic grapefruit juice at every yeah. event. <laughs> was, oh my goodness. <laughs> it, it gets to you being on the spotlight like that. You get narcissistic and, and Yeah, such. I think that pretty much his problem was always like he got used to the spotlight, he got yeah. used to the engine and it just became a thing. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, well, let's go to the real meat of the matter, and that's his theology. You mentioned mm -hmm. me-centered, and yeah. that's been our concern collectively, as you know, is that he mm -hmm. practices eisegesis, which means that um, he sees the Bible is about him. He's, mm -hmm. he's David. He, it's his Jordan River, etc. So when did you start to notice that when you went to Elevation? Um, unfortunately, not right away. It was basically like the last year that I was working there that I started like praying for discernment, um, stuff that I was seeing from staff and stuff that I was hearing around from people. I was like, this doesn't add up. This doesn't make sense. Um, so I just kept praying for discernment. Um, and there was a couple of sermons. I don't remember the titles cause it was so long ago. Um, where like, he was just always talked about himself in the story. And I was like, this isn't, it's not about you, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? So he was, kind of like, he was talking about himself in the Bible story? 
Yes. Like, he would place himself as, like, the characters, and I'm just like, it's not how it works. You know? Like, the hero of the story? Yeah, like, he's just like the David and the Joseph of just, like, and I'm just like, no. <laughs> oh, wow. So, slowly, you were starting to see that he was, um, he, he was not preaching the gospel. Absolutely. I think, too, because, like, I had friends, like, outsiders from Elevation who would just tell me, like, you know, beware Stephen Verdick. And I'm like, he's fine. He's a great pastor. And so I always, because we were told, like, because Stephen Furtick says, um, they're just haters, you know, mm -hmm. just ignore them. It's like, I'm just like, you're just a hater. Like, you just don't get it, you know. But then, like, slowly but surely, I started realizing, oh, like, they're right, you know. Yes. And so they would call you a hater right now? Um, people at staff will call me a hater, yeah. Hmm. Even though I don't hear you saying anything hateful. No, it's just the truth. It's the truth. Yeah, hello. <laughs> what a concept. I mean, I know like the truth will hurt and offend people, but yeah, that's true. It does offend people. The gospel is offensive because it says that, that we're sinners needing a savior and a lot of people don't want to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. So talk, talk us through um, an elevation um, on the ground experience, because I, I understand that that's what they're called, right? Elevation experiences. Is that what he's calling yeah. them? Okay. Yeah, they're not, yeah, they're, like, we were never allowed to call them, like, start, like, services or anything like that. It was an experience. Okay. So, like, that's also another red flag that I eventually kind of got aware of. <laughs> okay. It's an experience. Well, in your blog, you talked about the parking lot. Mm -hmm. What's, what is significant about that that we should know? Um, it's just, it gets a crowded a lot. So, like, there's, like, a huge parking team out in the front, um, guiding you where to go and where to park. Um, when you leave, it's chaotic. Like, it's like a bunch of people just trying to get out at once. And um, there's even like police officers who work there to like help guide traffic out. Um, it's pretty, that like, long of a line. So it's really intense. And yeah. then, were you guys wearing um, uniform t shirts or anything like that? Um, we, as photographers, we either had like um, shirts that said elevation on them or we just wore all black, all black on them. Oh, so you could disappear into the scene like like a wedding yeah. photographer. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. And mm -hmm. then, and so then, once you're in the the parking lot and you go through the doors, what happens next? Um, you wait a line again. Either you wait a line outside or you wait a line inside, depending on the weather. Why are um, you waiting in line to go to church? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Is it because they're they're ushering people in, or what's going on? Um, it's just they're trying to make sure like it's like an order um because it gets so crowded especially like in the main campus where he preaches um there's a huge line for it um they want to make sure like you don't sit in the wrong spot um there's a spot in the front where like, it's only reserved for staff uh, where they take off their name badges and then like um they pretend like they're part of the audience to so get like the crowd going when they stand up and clap is that the joe was talking about that the applause crowd in the front yeah. So they, they would sit in the front and get like the crowd going. Okay. All right. Yeah. So they would cheer, cheer everyone on. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then is, were there seating arrangements according to any other standards that people would be ushered to? Um, it depends on of like, if they were disabled or anything, like they would get like the, the floor seats. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, like we were just, forced to sit all the way to the end like you couldn't pick your seat like if you wanted to be in the middle like you couldn't okay. um, you just had to like go all the way down to like the next person this this reminds me of disneyland parking and disneyland seating <laughs> yeah. you're just told what to do yeah okay and then they have a band i understand because their their music is very popular um and a lot of people have told me that because i i don't know that i've listened to elevation music but a lot of people have told me that it's like Hillsong or Bethel and that it has yeah. false theology in it and it's used as a marketing tool. Yeah, uh, I would say so. Like a lot of their songs in there that they sing is pretty false teaching. Um, of course, like when I first listened to it, I didn't understand it, um, what people were saying about it. It wasn't until like I started researching about it and I was like, oh yeah, like it's pretty bad. Okay. So false teaching in the song. And did you get a sense that it's used for marketing to draw people into the church? Um, I don't know about that. I think Stephen, because he's 
um, pretty much on board for every song that they write. Yeah, like he's in every songwriting session that they're in. Oh, that's um, interesting. So he, so yeah. Stephen Furtick helps to write the Elevation songs. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I wouldn't say like that. I think he's pretty passionate about what he's singing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's about marketing, to be honest. Okay. It's a, so he sees it as teaching through the music. He sees it as like declaring like words over yourself. Oh, let's let's hear about declaring words. And that's very charismatic. Yes. Okay. So he does decreeing and declaring. Um, a lot of that, yes. I think because also he's good friends of TD Jakes, so he gets a lot of influence from him as well, teaching him stuff. So I could definitely see as him kind of like being like a word of faith pastor mm -hmm. a little bit. I was like, all right, Lord, like help me show me like where this is wrong, you know? And sure enough, uh, my mom was on the, in the car driving and she heard Costi hit on the radio and she came home and was like, guess what? And I'm like, what? And she said, Costi hit. And so I Googled him and ever since then, I just been on the path for truth. Wow. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord for answering your prayer to know. You read his book, God, Greed and the Prosperity Gospel? Yes, I actually messaged him on Twitter, um, like right after she told me, and then he responded with his email address, and I emailed him, and he was like, yeah, like, I'll send you the books, like, I'm here to help, you know, for sure, and so I read them in like two seconds, I'm like, this is so interesting. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? It's a great book, and he's just such a godly brother in Christ. He's, yeah. he's been so amazing to me during a recent um, uh, situation that was going on with with uh, me being attacked along with John MacArthur and Chris yeah. Rowe and, and Justin Peters. And, and I just, I went to Costi and he's like, don't, don't mm -hmm. even worry about these guys. He's like, don't even think about him. He's been so, yeah. it's just like, he's, he's so clear in his teaching and in his faith. Yeah, absolutely. I was super thankful for him. I think without him, like I, I wouldn't even know where to, to go to research stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Or the, is there anything else that people need to know about elevation um, to help them to not be deceived? I think my biggest thing just to tell people is just to pray for discernment. Um, I know you love Pastor Stephen. I know you love the music, but it's just, it's leading you to deception and leading you astray. Um, so I pray that they just pray for discernment and pray for research, have friends who are outsiders who have, warn them about about it and just like listen to them um yeah <laughs> that's all that, that's all i got because that's what i did i just listened to what people were saying to me took it and ran with it and i'm so thankful for them now that's that's very very courageous of you because it's easy to get that myopic tunnel vision and yeah you, know, you don't want to hear anybody who's contradicting your worldview so that's great that you were open to listening and and um and of course we need to compare everything to scripture so that mm -hmm. we won't be deceived. And that's, um, that's just essential. So Absolutely. Melanie, I really appreciate your time today. You're just so sweet and beautiful inside and out. Thank and I'm you. really glad I know you as a sister in Christ. And uh, can people get a hold of you? Um, so I have a blog called the hearts Um I have a contact page on there. People can email me and stuff and I'll email them back. Um, social media, my Twitter is B Melanie A and my Instagram is A Melanie B. Okay, and we'll have the links to all this below this video. That's really nice of you to be available to people because I know you might get a mixture of types of letters like I do. Oh, I definitely do. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, yeah. Jesus promised that. So absolutely I'm lean on his promises. Okay, well thank you again, Melanie. This has just been great to to get to know you more and to hear your testimony. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely.